All right, and it looks like we are live. Hello, hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back to the Daily Digital. My name is Junior, and this is the number one show where you get all of the insights of what's going on in our techno technological world, um, our ever-growing digital world. Today's date, it is currently Wednesday, August the 31st, so it's the last day of August, and we're about to be jumping into September. And we have four to five new articles to talk about here today. Well, four technically, and then, of course, we have our word of the week because it is Wednesday, and I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page as far as all of these uh, different terms that's been floating around. Um, so two of the articles that we have is going to be about Nike. So I don't want to make the whole show about Nike, but Nike is, Nike is booming right now. Um, they are doing it, <laughs> as their logo slogan says. Um, the next thing is going to be about McDonald's. McDonald's has done something interesting uh, in the Web3 space. And then the last one, uh, for all those beer lovers out there, if you love beer and you want to get some free beer for the literally the rest of your life, you may want to stick around for this one and uh, see what's going on with these NFTs. Um, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and take a quick break and then we will jump right into it. All right, and we are back. We are still live. We are rolling. So let's keep it going. So the first thing that I have off the block for you guys here today is going to be a company called Meta Brew Society. Meta Brew Society um, is actually a NFT collection, NFT project. Well, I want to say it's just an NFT project. I've never heard of them before, but to my understanding, they're not a beer brewery or anything like that, uh, which they may be actually getting into. But the Meta Brew Society is a collection of 6,000 NFTs with unseen in real life utilities, providing holders with an average of 200 cans of free craft beer per year for life. And yes, I did say for life. Their mission is no less than to become the leading Web3 beer brand and community. And you can also be a part of that. Your MBS or Meta Brew Society NFT allows you to take part in this revolutionary next step for beer and the brewing society. Holders are co-owners of our brewery in Bavaria. Okay, so they do have a brewery. Uh, they will receive innovative utility that is the first of its kind and that can be enjoyed in real life for a lifetime. So join our Web3 Beer Revolution. Uh, so what you would have to do for that is that you would have to get whitelisted. Um, currently right now their NFT drop is going to occur on September the 22nd. That's when you can start minting their NFTs and it's only going to be for their whitelist members. And if you want to get whitelisted, please do go in and get their beer box. Um, this is the only way you can actually get one of their NFTs and then access your free beer for life. Yes, I did say for life. <laughs> um, so yeah, so you have the utility here that they get, they're giving away 160 to 240 cans per year. A free beer and it's going to be a lifelong thing it's going to have an affiliate program uh exclusive events and of course there's going to be more uh, you can click on this button here to see more of their utilities uh, again the website is meta brew society.com um, they have their roadmap as and every nft project does the mint starts on september the 22nd 2022 so you better not miss out uh, phase one whitelist, phase two whitelist, and then phase three is going to be the public sale. Not sure when that's going to be. They don't, they don't many really mention here. Uh, here are a couple of their founders, so you can check out the team as well, and so on and so forth. Um, so, yeah, so that is something that's really cool. As I said, you get real in life utility for owning their NFT, um, which is Pretty, pretty much the whole basis behind NFT projects is like, all right, what can I actually get out of this? Uh, so if you love beer and you want to have free beer for life, check them out. Uh, just make sure you do your due diligence. Don't just jump into the project because I mentioned it. Jump into the project because you really believe in uh, uh, the community. You really believe everything behind it and you trust them. Um, so the next thing that I have here for you guys is going to be about Nike. And it looks like Nike is leading the way like by tenfold of this NFT world. Um, Nike makes $185 million via NFT sales 
Um, and it leaves Adidas or Adidas and Gucci behind. And this article here, it talks all about how Nike, um, you know, in April they dropped their first, um, what's it called, uh, NFT collection, which is virtual sneakers, which is Crypto Kicks, and that collection comp comprised of 20,000 NFTs, including one by an artist named Takashi Murakami. Uh, that actually resold for 134,000, uh, which I actually have another article I want to share with you guys. This article here is all about what Nike has been doing on the foreground, but on the background, you'll see that Nike, I mean, everybody loves Nike and the resale value on items has been like ridiculously crazy. Uh, per this latest numbers, Nike has generated 185 million in revenue via NFT sales and it has been able to do so by fostering a total of 67.2 thousand transactions. Those are NFT transactions. Um, Nike leads the way again. If you look at this uh, link here, uh, I didn't really want to go to the Twitter, but whatever, we're here now. I can click on an image. And as you can see here, uh, the consolidated brand stats final table. Nike here with 67,251 67, transactions. Uh, on the primary side of things, they had $93 million worth of revenue. But on the secondary side, they had $1.2, almost $1.3 billion worth of resales. Um, this is a total royalties of $92 million and a total revenue for the NFTs of $185 million. Um, this is like skyrocket to Mike Mount compared to number two, which was Dolce & Gabbana. Uh, NFT sales. So imagine you had $185 in your pocket and someone says they have $25 in their pocket and you guys want to play like Big Bank, Little Bank or something like that. Um, you would <laughs> you would definitely win uh, without no problem at all. Uh, you could like stomp them like 10 times over like I said. Um, Tiffany only had 12 million. Gucci had 11 million. Ad Adidas had 10 million. And then before that, it was Budweiser time. I mean, some of these companies, I don't even know they were really into the NFT sales. Uh, I actually had to, like, look into them and see what they've been doing because I did not know Budweiser was doing something in NFTs. It might, I mean, assuming they're doing beer, but even Bud Light, they're doing stuff in NFTs, which is crazy. I've talked about Time Magazine before. Adidas, Gucci, Tiffany, we've talked about. Don't you buy it? I don't think I've talked about them yet, but... Um, so, yeah, so that is that. And as you can see... Nike is definitely leading the way. Uh, it just does it, as they say. Um, and there was a, where's that at? I think that might be on another article. So I do have another article here as well. Like I said, that article there really talks about the primary side of things. Uh, this article here that was posted on August the 24th um, by Vogue Business Magazine. Uh, Nike leads the way. Nike leads NFT success by revenue as fashion shines over Pepsi and also Time Magazine. Um, they actually have one here. So the total NFT revenue in bar graph form uh, for Nike slash Artifact. I mean, just look at that. <laughs> that is towering over all the other brands there. Um, for the secondary market. Yeah, so this is the secondary market here. As you can see, again, Nike towering over all the other ones. Um, and then the next highest one is Adidas, which is here. And it's only like 175.7 million versus Nike's 1.3 billion. But then when you go down here to this one, they basically did the same exact bar graph. They just had to remove out Nike because they were just causing <laughs> causing some um, weird data happening there. Uh, you can actually see Adidas is actually leading the way on the secondary market as far as the highest brands in that case. Uh, next up would be Gucci and then next up would be Dolce & Gabbana after that. Um, so yeah, so let me know what you guys think about that. <clears throat> this, um, NFT market is here to stay. It is not going anywhere at all. Uh, definitely check out these, uh, links to these articles so that you can kind of get more informed of how Nike is actually doing this or what they're actually have been doing in the background. Cause I mean, Nike is doing a whole, whole lot. Nike is a wonderful brand. Everybody loves Nike. Um, and they've just taken this 
you know, NFT market and then, you know, really captured the true essence of it and then, you know, really making a whole lot of money off of it. Um, and as you can see here, based on this, um, uh, based on this chart here, again, secondary volume, you know, that that right there is uh, is where the where the game is, because once people buy stuff, it's a one of one. It becomes rare. It now becomes more valuable and people are buying stuff that, you know, cost them or people are buying stuff that cost someone else one hundred dollars for like literally a million dollars. And it's, it's just crazy. All right, so next thing that we have here is the word of the week. And the word of the week is going to be green crypto or green cryptocurrencies. And basically all this is is about how cryptocurrency is using up so much energy, so much power in the world. It is not efficient at all as far as energy consumption goes. And there's a couple of cryptocurrency projects out there that are actually a little bit more green. Um, so as if you didn't know, we have a list down here. The first on the list is Chia. Next one is Cardano. You know, if you remember yesterday, we just talked about Cardano, which was the uh, highest ranking, most loved cryptocurrency over Bitcoin, over Ethereum, uh, Nano, Stellar Lumens, and also Algorand. Those are the uh, main green cryptocurrencies. In order for you to be a green cryptocurrency, um, you need to do a couple of things. First of all, that proof of... Um, I was called proof of work that you do for uh, mining and stuff like that. Got to get rid of that. Uh, switch over to now the proof of participation or AKA proof of stake in order for you to become a little bit more green and a little bit more energy efficient. Uh, you need to transition over to renewable energy. So renewable energy, instead of using like fossil fuels or whatever, you can use wind power, you can use solar power, hydropower, whatever you want to use. Um, but using that instead rather than actually using all these fossil fuels, uh, you can operate as a pre-mine. So you can uh, integrate that pre-mining aspect into your cryptocurrency project, um, similar to way to um, fiat currencies and company shares go. And then the last one is by introducing carbon credits, um, the application of state carbon credits for cryptocurrency mining companies could lead to them buying carbon credits from other companies and also help to uh, offset the amount of emissions created globally for switching to greener energy. Uh, so just keep that in mind. If you guys have an NFT project or NFT, if you guys have a cryptocurrency project of your own and uh, you want to become a little bit more green, there's a couple of steps that you could possibly take uh, so that you can lower your carbon footprint in that case. Um, yeah, so the, uh, Ethereum, again, the system behind non-fungible tokens, they're using, uh, which plans, they would want to reduce the energy consumption by 99.5% by relying on proof of stake consensus mechanism. I talked about that in a previous episode. Uh, so you can kind of see this uh, article as well. Just kind of look at it and see how actual crypto mining takes place uh, the, from the transaction to the validation uh, to figuring out that puzzle piece and create that hash uh, and then the mining POW versus the mining POS and then see what the energy consumption is from there and then get your inclusion from there. Um, but of course the world wouldn't be the world if there wasn't a little bit of backlash on that. So I do have another article here and this is saying that there is no such thing as a green cryptocurrency. Um, and basically what the person who wrote this article is saying, which I semi sort of agree, um, but I'm a cryptocurrency lover, so I can't hundred percent agree on it. He is basically saying that, Hey, cryptocurrency, how did he put it? Cryptocurrency is basically a ridiculous fad anyway. So you shouldn't just do it and use your, you know, <laughs> your energy for, um, something better. So before going through the whole article, he has three options for us to take. The first option is that we could just allow cryptocurrency to continue to run on these fossil fuels, but he says this seems dangerously irresponsible. Um, we could engage in a massive push for renewable energy, but that energy wouldn't be used to lift people out of poverty. It wouldn't be used to decrease air pollution. It, will, it can't grow food. Um, 
you can't increase public transportation. The reason why is because we are using that to harness the power of cryptocurrencies. Um, we also need to continue producing that renewable energy to meet the increasing demand. More people want cryptocurrency. We'll also need to increase the, you know, the renewable energy power. Uh, so his last option, which is the option that he's choosing, the option that he's opting for, which is to recognize that cryptocurrency is pretty much just wasteful. It is unnecessary system and it uses our renewable resources for things that actually, uh, or he said that we should use our renewable resources for things that actually improve people's lives. So basically the reason why he's saying that this, uh, or there is no such thing as a green cryptocurrency is because it takes energy to make energy. So if you want to go out there and do all of the uh, solar power stuff, yeah, that's fine. But how are you going to create all the solar panels? Where are you going to store them at? Uh, how are you going to get all the batteries and stuff like that to to harness those energy? Um, and in order to do that, I mean, he's right. You, you have to use some sort of energy uh, for that all to work currently. Uh, wind power even still, I mean, you can, in order to put up a tower tall enough with a huge wind vane on it um, to capture the power of the wind, you need to build it. And then once you build it, you know, you end up having a whole wind farm at that point. And then from there, you can actually um, use that energy. But again, the more people that want cryptocurrency, the more energy that you're going to have to use to produce it and then so on and so forth. So again, I agree with what he's saying. There's, there's, there's truth to it per se. Uh, but again, with cryptocurrency, I don't think that it's so horrible that the world will <laughs> become any worse uh, because of it, in my opinion. Yes, of course, um, you can't grow food with it. But uh, yesterday we talked about Argentina being um, one of the places with high inflation and people can barely buy food with the current, you know, um, state of their, you know, currency market. But now with cryptocurrency, they, they can buy food. So they can't grow the food, but they can buy it. <laughs> you know, um, but you know, that's, that's neither here or there. Uh, everybody's entitled to your own opinion. I, myself, this whole show is just basically about my own, own opinion. I'd like to know what you guys think about in the comments, but until then moving on to the next item here, <clears throat> which is McDonald's McDonald's and artifacts has partnered up for a fast food in the metaverse kind of thing. Um, grand opening summer 2022, introducing hype meals and so much more. Uh, putting the meat in meta. That was corny. <laughs> Anyways, I guess that's my own opinion, right? Just chew it. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and play this video here real quick. Yeah, so nothing too crazy. Just a short, sweet video there. Um, and yeah, so what they're doing is that they're quote unquote building something special in their flagship location. Come visit the Metaverse first uh, QSR virtual franchise and mint your meal at the hover through instead of a drive through. It's a hover through for free while supplies last. Sign up for the MIC email list below to stay up to date on all of the MIC artifacts releases. Um, so yeah, so essentially what they are doing is kind of creating a, like, oh gosh, I don't even know how to explain it. Um, NFT type of thing inside the metaverse in which you can mint out like some food and stuff. Um, <laughs> hopefully that makes a little bit of sense here is, is, is kind of weird. I don't know. I, this is one of those projects where you have to actually like buy into it to see how exactly it works out. They don't give too, too much information as far as that. Um, yeah, they have the junior, try junior, junior signature meal, the junior, junior Whopper. Wait, isn't Whopper Burger King? 
Yeah, because they had a Big Mac. The Whopper is Burger King, right? I don't even eat fast food. Uh, when he isn't dropping bars or gems, he's crushing a stacked baked bacon cheese burger drizzled with yellow jacket sauce, yada, 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 and ice cold vanilla soft serve. The perfect complement to encounter the heat of the junior, junior Whopper and the best way to finish your meal. This one is free and for clone holders only. Um, here you can get an airdrop. This is... Whopper is Whopper is Burger King, right? Am I tripping? I'm just gonna leave that one alone. Um, moving on. Mick Artifacts is proud to partner with your favorite clone rapper, Junior Junior, to give you his signature meal plus wearable Mick Drip for <laughs> Mick Drip for your clone to rock. Uh, oh, they could, okay. So they're using Clone X there. Uh, the combo. Signature meal plus McDrip wearable is limited to 100 units. All right. Our next drop, which is going to be the hype meal. Uh, this one's saliv This one's worth salivating order over. Um, yeah, so I guess you got to have one of the Mick Artifacts NFTs in order to get that. Uh, ETH menu here. Yeah, some of these artists are actually really, really good with, with this stuff. Uh, what is Mick Artifacts? We are the first and only QSR franchise in the Artifact ecosystem owned and operated by over 140 clones that possess a job T trait. Mick Artifact purpose is to create pride and pride in and drive value for this rarity trait, all while serving up hype meals and signature works of art. While a few of you lucky clones can retire early, the rest of you cannot and we're not loving it. But <laughs> wag, wag me. Anyway, um, while you're here, make sure to try a double Mick Murakami burger or ten-piece pigeon McNuggets with staple sauce at select locations, uh, with many more. So, yes, yeah, so this is one of the ones I have to like. I, I'm actually like have to get one of these. I trust McDonald's kind of, not their food so much, but whatever. That's my opinion. Uh, what's in the hype meal box? Something special. Burger King best described it as have it your way. Just huddle and come hungry. See, they don't give you much at all. Uh, that's all good. Um, so, yeah. So, you guys take a look at that. Mick Artifacts. Mick Everything. Mick Drip. Mick Whopper. Which is confusing to me. But, uh, moving on. So again, I mentioned that we have two things from Nike, and here is a second one, which I know I'm going to make a lot of Michael Jordan lovers pretty mad for this, but hey, the stats is the stats. The Nike brand artifact may be the brand that actually jumps over jump man. Wow, I was I never thought another shoe brand would actually take over um Jordan spot, but as you guys can see a digital fashion shoe label is actually doing just that Granted they are owned by Nike and Nike is really pushing it um, But one of the biggest things is that resale value uh, That resale value is, is really a hitter on that um, So I want to give you guys a couple of a couple of numbers here so Again, they acquired artifact in December 2021 Artifact has since joined the Nike family of brands sitting alongside uh, the likes of Converse and Jordan at any time of per at the time of purchase artifact was estimated to be worth around 33 million. However, internet rumors estimated its purchase to be north of 1 billion. Um, this right here is just kind of talking about how um, Nike made that, you know, 185 million sales with NFTs or whatever. Um, um, but yeah, so to put this into comparison, in 2021, the Jordan brand alone earned Nike $4.7 billion in revenue, all of which came from primary sales. Again, those primary sales. Um, and of course, if I buy a pair of Jordans, Nike only gets my money once. If I sell my pair of Jordans to someone else, I get that money. Nike gets nothing. That's why these NFTs are so important because... Now they can have it in a smart contract that every time the shoe gets resold, 
they get a cut out of it. Um, so keep that in mind. So this is only a fraction of how much value the Jordan brand actually created. Um, it's estimated, however, that this price fluctuation only impacts a very small sought after group of sneakers with an estimated total market of about $6 billion as of 2019. Meanwhile, Artifact, Artifact itself did $1.29 billion, uh, including $92 million, $92 million in royalties in the secondary resale volume prior to the acquisition. Combined with the $93 million in primary Artifact sales, Nike captured the same volume in part, um, product sales from its secondary and primary markets for the very first time. Again, for the very first time, this is actually happening thanks to these digital um, assets. Although Artifact and Nike have a ways to go before topping the 4.7 billion in revenue generated by the Jordan brand, they are going to be able to catch up quickly with secondary market sales of their NFT sneakers and their hoodies. So remember, Jordan brand in one year did 4.7 billion, Artifact brand did 1.29 billion plus 92 million in royalties um, combined with the 93 million of their primary sales. So all of that added up together. Um, you're looking at like, I don't know, like 1.5 billion or something like that dollars. Uh, but again, this brand was just acquired in December of 2021. It's only August of 2022 and they're already touching billions right now. Uh, so they are really, really, really going to give Jordan a, a run for the money very quickly. Uh, this is just the Nike Artifact uh, hoodie there. Uh, and so on and so forth. And I think the last thing that I have... Okay, yeah, they talked about, you know, how Nike is going over uh, Gucci. Nike is going over... Um, uh, Tiffany, Gucci, and, Dolce and Gabbana, Adidas, and all that stuff there as well. Uh, they're beating all those. And the last article that I have here again is just that um, if you guys want to check out the actual Dune link here uh, to see all of this information right up front, uh, let's check out all of this minting data, minting demographics, and everything to see how everything matches up here as well. You can do that also. Um, yeah so yeah so you guys let me know what you think about all of that i am very 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 curious to know what you guys think about this nike uh wave coming here again nike is doing amazing things inside of the nft space and um they're definitely going to be a case study to watch out for in the uh in the next couple of years um because they've they've really paved in the way of making like a whole lot of money on this stuff um and as you know, they're digital sneakers, so they're really not even selling physical products. Just think about that. They're not selling physical products. They're selling digital assets that people are wearing inside the metaverse. And they're making billions of it, billions of dollars from it. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's here, guys. It's, it's here. Uh, thank you all for joining me here on this episode. I appreciate everyone's time. Let me know in the comments what you think about all of these different uh, all of these different articles. I'm gonna try and figure out what the heck is going on with uh, McDonald's and <laughs> all of that. Uh, but until then, if anybody else knows, let me know for sure. Reach out to me on all my social media channels. All my handles are in the description for this video. Uh, like the video, subscribe to my channel. I do this every single day, sharing all the best good news with you guys and even the not so good news. Um, we're in a crypto winter, so I don't think there's anything worse than that, right? Um, but yeah, so nothing else. You guys have a wonderful rest of your day and um, I'll see you guys later.